will give you as a light to the nations, that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. From the rising of the sun to its setting, my name shall be great among the nations, and in every place incense shall be offered to my name, and a pure offering. For my name shall be great among the nations, says the Lord of hosts. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Lord, open our lips. And our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Glory, glory to, to the, the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go to his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Psalm 139. Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys and my resting places and are acquainted with all of my ways. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips, but you, O oh Lord, know it all together. You press upon me behind and before, and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. For you yourself created my inmost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will thank you because I am marvelously made. Your works are wonderful, and I know it well. My body was not hidden from you while I was being made in secret and woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my limbs, yet unfinished in the womb. All of them were written in your book. They were fashioned day by day, when as yet there was none of them. How deep I find your thoughts, O God! How great is the sum of them! If I were to count them, they would be more in number than the sand. To count them all, my lifespan would need to be like yours. Glory, Glory to the, the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as it was in the beginning, beginning is, is now, now, and will, will be forever. forever. Amen. A reading from 1 Samuel. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out yet, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel, and he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been re revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore, Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. 
And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Then the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make both ears of anyone who hears of it tingle. On that day I will fulfill against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house from beginning to end. For I have told him that I am about to punish his house forever for the iniquity that he knew because of his sons were blaspheming God, and he did not restrain them. Therefore I swear to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be expiated by sacrifice or offering forever. Samuel lay there until morning, then he opened the doors of the house of the Lord. Samuel was afraid to tell the vision to Eli, but Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son, he said, here I am. Eli said, what was it that he told you? Do not hide it from me. May God do so to you and more also if you hide anything from me of all that he told you. So Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. Then he said, it is the Lord, let him do what seems good to him. As Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel from Dan to Beersheba knew that Samuel was a trustworthy prophet of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The first song of Isaiah. Surely it, it is, is God, God who saves me. me. I, I will trust, trust in him, him and not be afraid. afraid. For the, the Lord, Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my Savior. Therefore you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation, and on that day you shall say, Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things, and this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion, ring out your joy, for the great one in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from 1 Corinthians. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are beneficial. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be dominated by anything. Food is meant for the stomach, and the stomach for food, and God will destroy both one and the other. The body is meant not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body, and God raised the Lord and will also raise us by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Should I therefore take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never. Do you not know that whoever is united to a prostitute becomes one body with her? For it is said, the two shall be one flesh. But anyone united to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Shun fornication. Every sin that a person commits is outside the body, but the fornicator sins against the body itself. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, which you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you were bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The second song of Isaiah. Seek, Seek the, the Lord while he wills to be found. Call upon him when he draws near. near. Let, let the, the wicked, wicked forsake, forsake their ways, and the evil ones their, their thoughts. And, and let them turn to the Lord, and he will have compassion. And to our God, for he will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as rain and snow fall down from the heavens, and return not again, but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, seed for sowing and bread for eating, so is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish that which I have purposed, and prosper in that for which I have sent it. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and, and will be forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. 
Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses and the law and the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said to him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. It is important. It's tomorrow. Tomorrow, Monday, is Martin Luther King Day. It's not just important because of the man himself. It's not just important because the issue of racism is being revisited these days under the rubric Black Lives Matter. It is important because it is through this issue of racism that John's Gospel today is telling us some things about ourselves. But for now, let's start with James Baldwin, activist, essayist, playwright, whose eloquent voice shaped the civil rights movement in the 1960s in America. As a member of the Congress of Racial Equality, Baldwin traveled across the American South lecturing on racial inequality. And he graced the cover of Time magazine on May the 17th, 1963. But look now to a letter Baldwin wrote to his nephew in 1962, the year before. His perspective and his sentiment then is quite appropriate for today worth reflecting on as we prepare ourselves for Martin Luther King Day 2021. Baldwin says this to his nephew, I have begun this letter five times and torn it up five times. His point, racism is still powerful. It has impoverished many, including his nephew. But to be honest, people have no clue, since we might say it's an almost given of culture that black men are inferior. Now, many white people, of course, know better than this, but it is one thing to know it, and it is quite another thing to do it, to act upon it. Acting upon it is the topic for the gospel today. You must love them, Baldwin continues in his letter. They are your brother, your lost younger brothers, and if the word integration means anything, this is what it means, to force our brothers to see themselves as they are. I saw you under the fig tree. What Jesus means by this is that Jesus sees Nathanael whole. For this is how God sees us. Nathanael's got it together. In other words, all of him is in one place, under the fig tree. He's not toggling between his work self and his spouse self and his parental self and his child self and his hanging with the guy's self and his self I don't care to talk about self and his Self, I wish I could be if I could be myself, self, or his, my guilty feeling, self. 
and on it goes. In short, however, under the fig tree, he's got it all together. He's healed. He is a complete person. We might say he's perfect. He is perfect. And so Jesus sees Nathanael as he truly is, as a whole being. Like with Baldwin, what he says, force our brothers to see. Nathaniel doesn't either start with much hope of change. After all, I mean, let's face it, forced change or even the forced opportunity of change doesn't usually make much of a difference at all because change is hard. All the encouragement under heaven is needed. Because as Paul reminds us in his first epistle to the Corinthians, unite with a prostitute, and the two of you shall become one flesh. It's the same with prejudice. Black lives are inferior, for example. You and your prejudice of choice accept your prejudice, and you both become one racist. But Paul concludes, and this is true also, anyone united to the Lord becomes the same, only with this, where we've swapped prejudice for Christ. Then it is that Paul reminds us, when we unite with Christ, we become one spirit with him. So what does the gospel tell us about ourselves? Are we hopelessly racist, in league with a prejudice? Or is there a hope for wholeness? There is hope. Swap your prejudice, racism, with Christ. For this is the Christ who has prejudiced you. In other words, he has prejudged you. And he has found you to be worthy. You have been thus set free. Set free your neighbor now. You have been set free. Set your neighbor free now. But how? Nathaniel asks Jesus, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. It works the other way around, too. Jesus asked Nathanael, where did you get to know me? Nathanael answered, I saw you from under the fig tree. John Calvin put this miracle of becoming as one, united not to a prostitute, but united to Christ, this uniting together as one. He puts it like this. He said, look at yourself deeply enough and you will be brought face to face with Christ. Conversely, look to Christ deeply enough, and you will be brought face to face with your true self. Blessings and warts and all. Your whole true self. Look at a black life deeply enough, and you will be brought to Christ. Look to Christ deeply enough, and you will be brought face to face with the one, whomever it may be, who most scares you, for you will arrive there in love through understanding. Love through understanding called compassion. Under the fig tree, you see this metaphor in Scripture, it is a fertile place for us to be. Believe me, come and see. Come and see. Baldwin told his nephew, to force our brothers to see themselves as they are. Christ says, Bonding with Christ bonds 
with our prejudice. And thus it is that it sets us free, declares us worthy, judges us so that we may see the other and judge them not except with love, of course. Then we fulfilled the gospel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? Jesus tells Nathanael, You will see greater things than these. And so will you and I see greater things than these. The Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Suffrages set be. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day, we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy upon us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. And we shall never hope in vain. Almighty God, whose Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, is the light of the world, grant that your people, illumined by your word and sacraments, may shine with the radiance of Christ's glory, that he may be known, worshipped, and obeyed to the ends of the earth, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning, drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your law, and guide our feet into the way of peace, that having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose Spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplication and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you. Through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Prayers of the People, Form 6. In peace we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work, for our for families, families, friends, and neighbors, and, neighbors, and for, for those, those who are alone, for this community, the nation, and the world, for, for all, all who work, work for, for justice, justice, freedom, and peace, for the just and proper use of your creation, for the victims, victims of, of hunger, hunger, fear, injustice, injustice and, and oppression, for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, for those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For our presiding bishop, Michael Curry, 
and our Bishop Brian Cole, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God and his church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And, and praise your name forever, forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Who put, put their, their trust, trust in you. you. Heavenly Father, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. Accept and fulfill our petitions, we pray, not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us in your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The general thanksgiving. Almighty God, God of our mercies, you, our unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all evermore. Amen.